Today I'm going over the AI voice singing software called RVC, also known as Retrieval Based Voice Conversion, and personally I think it's better than Sovit's SVC. To show this, I've got songs that I've already inferenced, one from RVC and SVC, and I'm just going to play them so that you can hear the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> Alright, so what did you think? Convinced? Well, let's go ahead and get started with the installation as I'm going to show you how to install it in today's video. And one more thing, sorry today guys, everything is going to be locally ran so I'm not going to be showing any Google Colab. Luckily, installation is super easy for Windows users and I think maybe even Mac. Um, but we're going to head over to the main part of the GitHub. So just click this retrieval based conversion web UI and when you scroll down, you'll see something like this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and translate everything to English. So just right click and Google Translate will do the work for us. But we're going to go ahead and head on over to this releases tab. And what we're going to do is download this right here, which is the complete package where everything is installed. So let's just go ahead and open link in new tab. It's going to pull this open here. And then you just go ahead and install it into a folder down here. So just find a folder, install it. And I think it goes without saying, install all these at your own risk, do your own research and don't just trust me blindly. But from what I've got, this is for the most part safe. So um, this RVC beta, you're going to end up with a zip folder that you're actually going to need to uh, use some type of tool to unzip it. So, so what I used was this Bree zip, which is um, which comes with the Microsoft Store. So I already, unfortunately, deleted the RVC beta folder. So um, I can't really show you how that was done. However, once you have it done and unzipped, um, you want to go ahead and double click into it, and then you have this RVC beta here. So I'm just gonna move it one folder up. So I'm gonna going to do copy and then go out and then paste. So you don't technically need to do this, but for my sake of mind and for my ease of convenience, I like to do this so that I just have to click into it once. So you don't really have to do that if you don't want to wait for it to copy. And once you have it done, now when we click into it, we have everything in here. Okay, cool. So before I go into running everything, um, if you did want to install this locally using Python, um, to do that, it's pretty easy. If you head on over to scroll down and click this English down here, um, you can scroll down more and see some installation um, instructions. I recommend you just run this pip install line here and then run the pip install requirements in a virtual environment. I didn't use any of the poetry or this line at all to do the, the installation. And then what I did was just move all of these from the zip folder into the folders that I installed with VS Code. But I think that's just a roundabout way of going about it if you wanted to use to install it manually. So with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and now jump into here. And this is super easy. You just go ahead and go to this go, go web.bat. But before we run that, I'm going to go ahead and open with code so that we can see what's actually happening. So here we have a runtime Python uh, executable. Um, it's running the infer Python program and is opening a web page on this port here. So we're going to go ahead and double click into it. And then this command line window is going to open. So you're going to see a use language English US and a couple of other things pop up and then um, it's going to open up a browser. So you'll see a Windows alert here. Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some of these features and I'm just going to go ahead and allow access. Now you have it running locally on this URL. And if you don't have a page that opens up, you can always open one up locally here. I'll even show in an incognito browser. If you just type in localhost um, 7, what is it? 7897, localhost 7897. It's going to pop up this web page that we have here. So here we are. We have the page with all of the tabs. Uh, we're only going to focus on model inference, accompaniment, and vocal separation and train. These other ones I'm not going to go over. And there should be a FAQ section here, but it looks like it's broken. So the first thing is we need to separate vocals from audio. I recommend you use UVR and export it out to a WAV file as these don't allow you to export it out to a WAV file, unfortunately. Um, if you want to see how to do that, go to the Sovitz SVC video I have for Google Colab where I show you how to install UVR, um, Ultimate Vocal Remover. 
If you don't want to go to that video, just go to this GitHub page and install it with this main download link here. Okay, done. Um, but for those of you who don't want to install that, this one does the job decently well to separate both of them. So I don't think it really matters which one you select here. I tested both and they both sound the same. So HP5 is what we're going to use. And I'm not too sure what they're talking about here. Um, so all we have to do is select the input audio folder path. So what we do is um, I created a folder called songs inside of the RVC beta folder. And inside of this is a song. So all you have to do is click into the folder, uh, go into the address bar up here, click copy address, and then just paste that into here. So all you have to do is paste and you're done. And then we're going to specify into the same folder, you know, the same, the same place and for instrumentals and vocals. And all we're going to do is click this gigantic convert button. So click convert, and then it's going to take, um, some time depending on your GPU, your CPU, and do the conversion. So let's just wait for that to finish up. Here we are, file style file success. And here we go, we've got the two files here, a reformatted wave, and you can hear the instrumentals and all that. Okay, cool. We're not gonna play any more of that. Now you've got a vocal file saved. So next thing you're gonna want to do is train a voice and this is probably the most important part that all you guys are waiting for all we're gonna do is head on over to this train tab and before we actually go into training if you don't have any training data um, check out the Sovitz SVC video where I go in depth on how you can record your own voice and create samples for that and so we're just gonna be reusing those same samples in this video so inside of that RVC beta folder I went ahead and created a folder called voice I made a new folder called me and inside of this me folder, I have all of the raw files inside of here. So you have to make sure that they are the audio files. You cannot have a folder inside of here because if you have a folder in here, it won't grab the audio that is inside of this folder. So make sure everything is in a WAV file or an audio file inside of this folder, um, inside of whatever folder that you're going to link it to. We're going to go ahead and close that for now and enter in an experiment name. So I'm just going to call this myself and um, because we're going to be using v2 we're going to want to select 40k for our targeting sample rate for this we're going to select true as singing must voice cannot um, and then we're going to use v2 here and uh, for the cpu threads uh, you have to adjust for your cpu for your cpu i'm going to leave at 32 but i recommend doing something like 16 or 8 if you, if you have a smaller cpu and inside of here is going to be the input folder training path so that's going to be where those audio samples come in handy so let's go ahead open that folder once again and go ahead and copy that address so you go to the address bar i'm going to click me copy address and go ahead and paste so we've got that pasted in there we're gonna leave this as zero and then we're going to process the data so it's gonna take a little bit of time to process the data and here we have a bunch of uh, lines and yes the data has been processed the next thing we're gonna do is um, head on down over to this step 2b part where we're going to select how we're going to um, use the what type of pitch algorithm we're going to use so um, it's going to automatically get your gpu information here so just go ahead and leave all of that and we're going to select harvest harvest is going to be the best quality they say but the slowest processing and since we're going for quality we're going to be using harvest so go ahead and do feature extraction here it's going to do that i believe this is equivalent to pre hubert inside of um so if it's SVC and then we're going to go into this fill training section down here um, now that this prehuber is done. So but what I like to do is modify this for how much frequency I want to save it. So I'm going to train for 200 epochs. So I'm going to do 200 and I'm going to save every 50. This is just my preference. Um, I don't want to save every epoch because I want to save some space. So we're just going to go ahead and do 50. And for this, I'm going to do max size because this is what my my CPU, my GPU can handle. But you can adjust this based on what you have. I'm going to select no here to save disk space. We're going to select no here to save more space. And then and then we're going to leave this at no here. So um, this is where your pre-trained models come in. They should already be loaded in here. And once you have all that, we're going to go ahead and train. So let's just go ahead and click one click training and it's going to go ahead and start. And so I made it a little bit smaller so that we could finish 
so that I could just show you how it exports. So we got five and five here, one click training. And in order to see how it's going, you can head on over to this command line window that popped up and you can see how the process is going through. So this is going to be um, how you can monitor what's happening and if you're getting any errors. So if it's not training or for whatever reason it's not continuing, you might be able to find some, some important information in here. And so here we see myself training Epoch 1, Epoch finished here, and here we have it. We have five Epochs done and the program is now closed, so success. So to see um, where our folders, if we go into the folder now, inside of um, weights, you'll have a um, myself uh, PyTorch file here. And then inside of logs, you will have some additional um, files here where if you ran into any issues, um, you could just recontinue training. So to recontinue training, all you would have to do is input the, the same experiment name. Um, make sure you set all the stuff back to the same values. Uh, make sure you get your, your training folder path, all these, and then you would click train model um, to continue training your model. And so here you can see that it has loaded in this checkpoint here, um, Epoch 5. And since this one is already finished, it's just going to um, finish out. So cool. Now that we've got our model trained, we can head on over to model inference where we'll go ahead and use the model. And so uh, what we want to do here is refresh timber list and index path. And here you have the um, the path. So myself PTH um, PyTorch. And if you have if you change it for longer, if you had a larger epoch, you'll probably see something along the lines that looks like um, myself like 130 or myself 150 um, so on and so forth but since I only did one epoch and one training interval I just did myself so that is what I have here um, leave this speaker ID at zero um, this is going to be for transposing your pitch so if you're converting from a female singer to a male singer you probably want to go negative 12 so that you're one octave lower um, but if you're converting male to male you'll probably do um, zero and vice versa if you're converting male to female you'll probably do 12 and you get the point there so the other parts are going to be pretty self-explanatory as well we're going to enter the path of the audio file to be processed and this is going to be the extracted audio file remember remember how we created that songs folder um, and we got the vocal and instrument file well we're going to go ahead and now copy the path of this instrumental file sorry of this vocal file to that area to make it easy on myself i like to rename it something simple like vocal just in case something happens and um to copy it you can just right click and do copy as path if you're on windows 10 or somewhere else you can just right click it go to properties and then copy this locations area um, into there and then copy paste the name after so that might look like this so copy paste go back copy and then do a backslash and paste so that's how that would you would do that if you don't have that copy path that copy as path feature so here we have it. we're going to go ahead and use harvest to have the better pitch and then we're going to leave this here at three um, and then as well we're going to select in our auto detect index path directory so for this click the v21 and then we can leave everything down here as the same so now all we have to do is just click convert and we'll it, it'll start converting if you're wondering what this is down here this is for batch conversion which we're not going over in today's video um, and I haven't played around with it but uh, you can try it out and see how you like it and we're just gonna go ahead and wait for this to finish all right and here we go let's go ahead and just see how it plays and this is a super quick trained model so it's I don't know how it's going to sound. Okay, so not bad for about uh, two minutes of training. Of course, if you train it longer, you'll get the result that I had earlier, which is much more clear and a little bit more crisp. So um, to go ahead and save this, it's a little bit different than the Soviets. Um, you have to go ahead and click these three, these this area over here and click download. And then you can save it in whatever folder you want. So you could save it in like the songs area. You could rename it and boom, save. If you're wondering where they're actually stored inside of the folder, um, if you close out of the web, web browser, it deletes everything. If you are wondering where it generates it, it's going to be inside of this capital T-E-M-P, this temp folder. 
So if you just go into there, you'll see that there's a WAV file in here. So if we did a second generation, um, we'll actually see that there is going to be a second WAV file that pops up inside of this folder directory. So here you go, you see that second one pop up and yeah. Alrighty, so that is a bulk majority of how you get everything up and running. And of course, you may run into some issues. So let's head on over to the wiki of the RVC page so that we can take a look at the FAQ section. So let's head on over to the GitHub page, click on this wiki area. And then if you scroll to FAQ, frequently asked questions, um, now you can see a bunch of FAQ questions that you might be able to, um, you know, that might answer some of your questions. So check here uh, before you ask any questions and then as well you can go ahead and you know select some of these other areas inside of the inside of the wiki but be be aware that some of them are in Chinese though so you'll have to use um, right click translate to English so so you can even see these steps here as well if you want a written explanation of how it's done um, and that is going to pretty much sum it up. All right, so hopefully you found that helpful and have some fun with RVC. Like I said, if you wanna do any of the audio curation or any of the data curation for training your voice, go check out that Sovitz SVC video that I did on Google Colab, as I have an extensive tutorial on how you can split the audio and do all of that sorting. So go check those out if you need help with some data, and that's gonna to be today's video, so see you guys later, and till next time.